Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call to order this Tuesday, November 28th, 2023, regular meeting of the Pierce County Council. The time is 3.03 p.m. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Campbell. Excused. Councilmember Kruber. Here. Councilmember Denson. Here. Councilmember Herrera. Here. Councilmember Hitchin. Here. Councilmember Morrell. Here. And Councilmember Mello. Here. There are six members present, Mr. Chair. We have six members present and a quorum. Item number three is our Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag and our Land Acknowledgement. Please join us in listening to the Land Acknowledgement and Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag, led by Councilmember Herrera, followed by a moment of silence dedicated to former First Lady of the United States, Rosalind Carter. Councilmember Herrera. Thank you, Chair. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional homelands of the Coast Salish tribes. Coast Salish people have lived in, on and stewarded these lands since time immemorial and continue to do so today. We recognize that this land acknowledgement is one small step towards true allyship and we commit to the uplifting voices, experiences, and histories of the indigenous peoples of this land. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Aye. Pledge of Allegiance, Allegiance to, the to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Run item number four. Uh, the approval of our agenda. Are there any objections to approving today's agenda as presented? Seeing no objection, the agenda is approved. On today's council agenda, there will be multiple opportunities for public comment. On the consent agenda, you may provide comment on any final action item. This does not include items placed on the consent agenda simply for introduction and scheduling. On today's consent agenda, there is one grant for approval and two department fund requests for the use of vacancy savings. Both are available for public comment. During sections eight and nine of the agenda, we will take public comment on each ordinance and resolution individually. And finally, under the community forum portion of our meeting, there will be an opportunity to address the council on any topic that is not on today's agenda. We remind folks to please address all comments to the chair and to be mindful of the decorum expected during this meeting. For more information on the rules for public participation, please review the bottom of page one of today's agenda. That brings us to section five. We now have the consent agenda before us. Does any member wish to pull any item from the consent agenda? Seeing none, Vice Chair Campbell, for a motion, please. Thank you, Chair. I move the consent agenda as presented. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to adopt the consent agenda as presented. We will open it up for a public hearing. Any member of the public wish to provide comment on any final action item on the consent agenda? Um, we'll go to the Zoom room as there's no members of the public in our council chambers. Mr. Weinsberry, anybody for public comment? on final action items on our consent agenda. Yes, sir. For any members of the public who wish to provide comment on the final action items of the consent agenda, press the raise hand icon on Zoom or star nine on your telephone keypad. And I see no hands at this time, Chair. See no hands, we'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the council. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll on the consent agenda? Council Member Kruger. Aye. Council Member Denson. Aye. Council Member Herrera. Aye. Council Member Hitchin. Aye. Council Member Morrell. Aye. Councilmember Campbell? Aye. And Councilmember Mello? Aye. The result of the roll call vote is seven ayes and zero nays. On a vote of seven ayes and zero nays, the consent agenda is adopted. Item six is messages from the executive, our judges, and the prosecuting attorney, and there are none today. Item seven is proclamations, recognitions, and awards, and there are none of those today either. That brings us to section eight, ordinances. We have proposal 2023-70S before us. Vice Chair Campbell for a motion. Thank you, Chair. I move proposal number 20. 
Thank you, Chair. I move proposal number 2020. We're having a small mic issue here. I think we have it figured out. Thank you. I move proposal number 2023-70S. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to adopt proposal 2023-70S. Madam Clerk, will you please read the title to the record? Proposal number 2023-78, excuse me, 70S. In ordinance of the Pierce County Council related to wage adjustments for non-representative employees of the Office of the Pierce County Council and admitting the Pierce County Salary Classification Plan. Thank you. Ms. Murray, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Julie Murray, Chief of Staff. Today, presenting Proposal 2023-70S, which modifies the classification and salary plan for the Office of the Pierce County Council to reflect the Council's reorganization, the recommendations of the Council-directed class and compensation study, and the recommendations of the Chief of Staff. Uh, this received a due pass recommendation by the Rules and Operations Committee yesterday, November 27th. Uh, by way of background, the Council's administrative guidelines provide that the Rules and Operations Committee will periodically review the Council's salary plan, employee job descriptions, and employee classifications based on an objective analysis of the duties and responsibilities for the position. Uh, in Resolution 2023-95, uh, the Council's staff was reorganized, and that reorganization created the position of a policy director to supervise the Council's policy and budget staff, and there was an adjustment made to the Council's classification and compensation plan to account for that change. However, the reorganization also created a legal team led by the Council's chief counsel and a communications team to be led by the Council's communication manager. These supervisory duties are not reflected in the current classification, job descriptions, and salary plan for these positions. In addition, the Council directed an Ordinance 2023-27 for the Pierce County Human Resources Department to conduct a classification and compensation study for the positions of Council Member Assistant 3, Chief Legal Counsel, IT and Operations Coordinator, the Clerk Position Series, and to provide recommendations as to their compensation. To produce an accurate study, the Human Resources Department requested that the job descriptions of these positions be reviewed and, if necessary, updated. Uh, the Chief of Staff reviewed those descriptions with staff and presented updated job descriptions to the Rules and Operations Committee through the month of uh, August 2023, and those job descriptions formed the foundation of the class and comp study. On November 8th, the Human Resources Department provided its study and its recommendation. Those are included in the Council's packet. The Human Resources Department recommends the following changes to the Council's salary plan. The first is Council uh, Member Assistant 3 would be uh, reallocated to salary range 25 from its existing range 24. That is approximately a $10,000 a year um, increase. The Chief Legal Counsel would move from range 30 um, to a new range 33, and that pay would scale would be between 152000 to 243000 The IT and Operations Coordinator's range would increase from range 21 to range 24, and that is generally um, an increase of about um, ranging from 6 to $10 uh, an hour difference. There's no changes to the clerk series with the exception of the assistant clerk, and they are recommending their new range and that it be that the pay for this position be decreased approximately $5 an hour. And then at the chief of staff's uh, request, I asked the human resources department to review the council's communication coordinator range. Um, during the comp, comp and class study, we realized that it did not align to the current um, scheme of the 10-step progression that was implemented from the uh, Council's 2021 Comp and Class study, and they're rec recommending that it move from range 29 to range 23, which is, uh, some, which is the range used for the associate clerk position because they shared um, a similar midpoint salary range. What you have today before you in Ordinance uh, 2023-70-S is to implement the recommendations of the Chief of Staff. 
Um, with the exception of the chief legal counsel, the, the ordinance would implement the salary ranges recommended by the Human Resources Department, effective 1923, so therefore retroactive. Uh, to recognize the internal hierarchy of the council, the chief legal position is placed on range 31, effective 1923, and that is the range currently assigned to the policy director, deputy chief of staff. Uh, all of those revisions are contained in Exhibit A of the ordinance. Uh, it would also revise the salary range for the communication manager, public information officer, moving it from range 27 to 28, and that would to reflect the increased responsibilities from the council's reorganization, and that's consistent with county policy that the addition of supervisory duties increases salary from anywhere from 5 to 10 percent. Also included in Exhibit A is the elimination of 18 inactive positions. Uh, those predate the Council's 2021 classification study and not been used since that time. Uh, Exhibit B contains the job descriptions to all the positions for which a new salary range is uh, recommended and those revisions reflect the current duties and responsibilities and salary of the positions. Um, included in there is a revision to the Council Communications Coordinator uh, job description to more accurately reflect um, its duties. Uh, then the Council Member Assistant 3 title is revised to Council Member Assistant. Uh, in July, you eliminated Council Member Assistant 1 and 2. Um, so there's only one council member assistant classific uh, range and classification. And then um, added to the council's classification plan is the position of the assistant to the hearing examiner. That position would report to the chief of staff, but is intended to provide assistance to the contracted hearing examiners that the council uses. The compensation for that position is set at range 23, uh, similar to the associate clerk and both the job description and that salary range was developed um, with the assistant of the chief legal counsel and the human resources department. Uh, so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Murray. Um, do we have questions for our chief of staff before we open this up for a public hearing? Uh, Ms. Murray, just letting you know, I think we have a different nameplate for you. Oh. <laughs> Just in case anyone's... Tom and I look... It's all good. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Councilmember Herrera. Thank you, Chair. I have a question on the assistant um, hearing examiner. Um, mm -hmm. uh, is that like a, a new reorganization under the council, or is that something that we're refilling? Um, so my understanding is that our past hearing examiners have uh, provided their own administrative support, but in terms of finding a new person to replace, uh, I believe Mr. Casano, that it was sort of uh, learned that the, in terms of the industry and market of people who would be interested in being a hearing examiner, they don't want to assume that responsibility of their own admin support. So the thought is bringing a person on board um, who can provide that assistance, but also provide some backup to the clerks. Um, and that's why it is reporting to the chief of staff rather than being um, a, uh, an employee potentially of the um, hearing examiner. So um, we would look to fill that position next year and that, that is sort of a new, um, a new uh, role we would have within the council. Mm -hmm. And a follow-up question is, um, and, and this, this job here is, uh, uh, doesn't really do any policy, they just do kind of like admin work so there's no perception of influence or anything like that since they're, they'd be under the umbrella here, over here. Yeah, it is 100% um, an administrative professional, um, has no policy duties, and that's why it can provide some assistance to the council because we likewise have the need for administrative support. But it is functionally different from the clerks in that we are looking for a person in this position that has some um, experience in the legal profession as either a paralegal or a legal assistant, so it's kind of qualitatively different, but the position would be solely doing admin support. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Helpful questions. Other questions before we open this up for a public hearing? Not seeing any. Um, uh, let's open this up for a, a public hearing. There remains no members of the public in our council chambers. So Mr. Weinsbury, anybody wishing to provide comment on proposal 2023-70S? Uh, 
Yes, sir. For any members of the public who wish to provide comment on proposal number 2023-70S, press the raise hand icon on Zoom or star nine on your telephone keypad. And I see no hands at this time, Chair. Seeing no hands, we'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the council. Are there final remarks by council members? Councilmember Member Morrell. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to acknowledge um, Ms. Murray's work on this particular piece of uh, the ordinance that's before us. I think a lot of work has gone into this. Um, she definitely hit the ground running when she was hired, and uh, this is any time when you're doing classifications and salaries, it uh, <clears throat> uh, people get kind of interested in it, and uh, I, I appreciate the professionalism um, moving this forward and uh, getting it to a workable uh, document. And uh, I, there again, I appreciate um, how you navigated a lot of uh, challenges and uh, that you worked with HR in, in coming up with uh, this particular, uh, both the wage adjustment and the classification plan. So I just want to acknowledge that and say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilman Rell. Uh, I just wanted to also uh, concur with those remarks. Um, Grateful to the many conversations <coughs> that the staff have had um, with the uh, various staff, um, with council members, um, and the Human Resources Department to bring forward a fair, objective, and data-driven uh, recommendation. Um, as has been noted, uh, not only do we update um, the salary schedule for a, a few job classifications here in the Office of the County Council, um, to be current and, and uh, uh, updated. But this n new function of assistant to the hearings examiner, uh, this administrative assistant, um, is also new as has been noted. As we've been trying to um, recruit a new hearings examiner, because their current hearings examiner, after, s after several times of uh, renewing his contract, he said, I'm done, I'm really done. Um, he's been with us for a long time and has provided- We're really, really done. <laughs> We, we we have we have heard that um, one of the the major constraints in bringing on a, a new hearings examiner is this administrative function, and so taking advantage of this opportunity to bring administrative support, um, we really believe will um, aid in the uh, hiring and, and retention of a long term hearings examiner for the foreseeable future and take that burden off of that independent contractor who is independent of uh, of the council. Um, so uh, glad we can, we, we found uh, th this opportunity to include that. Um, it makes a lot of sense. Seeing no other remarks, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll on 2023-70S. Council Member Denson. Aye. Council Member Herrera. Aye. Council Member Hinchin. Aye. Council Member Morrell? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Kruver? Aye. And Council Member Mello? Aye. The result of the roll call vote is seven ayes and zero nays. On the vote of seven ayes and zero nays, the ordinance is adopted. Red section nine resolutions. We have proposal resolution 2023-162S before us. Council Member Denson for a motion. Thank you, Chair. I move R 2023-162S. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2023-162S. Madam Clerk, will you please read the title into the record? R2023-162S, a resolution of the Pierce County Council authorizing the Pierce County Executive to execute an interlocal agreement with the Peninsula Metropolitan Park District for distribu distribution of park impact fee funds and requesting that the Finance Department record said agreement on the county's dedicated interlocal agreement website. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kruger, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Council. Um, as the title of this proposal indicates, um, this proposal would allocate funding to the Peninsula Metropolitan Park District. 
the county's capital facilities plan adopted through ordinance number 2021-110S3 included an $800,000 appropriation providing funding to both the Key Peninsula and the Peninsula Metropolitan Park districts, and those are two separate entities. The Pierce County Biennial Budget, also adopted back in 2021 through ordinance number 2021-100S2, includes the same appropriation, $800,000. The distribution methodology recommended by the Parks and Recreation Department for these funds um, divides the funds in the following manner, $200,000 to each park district, with the remaining amount to be distributed on a per capita basis. This would allocate $472,000 to the Peninsula Metropolitan Park District, and that's the park district on the Gig Harbor Peninsula. This proposal was reviewed by the Community Development Committee um, on November 20th and was forwarded to this council with the due pass as substituted recommendation, and I would be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Kruger. Are there questions for Mr. Kruger before we open this up for a public hearing? Councilmember Kruger. Thank you, Terry. This probably isn't anything, but it, when it says in requesting the finance department report, is that something you have to ask for? It's not automatic. It's, it's, an, it's a new item, and it's not automatic. And in the past, we found that it wasn't happening. And so this is something that we've been adding to all of our interlocal agreement um, ordinances or resolutions so that that follow-up takes place. Okay. I would think it would just be in code to not have to that it's just done and not have to request it each time. But anyway, okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that question. Councilmember Morrell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Kruger, the Exhibit A on this particular resolution, has that been used in previous allocations, or is this a brand new interlocal agreement? It's, it's, it's brand new, council member, but it's very similar to previous interlocal agreements that distributed real estate excise tax funding to the park districts. Okay. I was just curious. So basically we're requesting the Pierce County or the uh, executive to execute this particular interlocal. In other words, they can't modify it. They can't really do any changes to it. It's just they have to go with Exhibit A. They do. Minor modifications are appropriate. If there's things in the interlocal agreement that may be Scribner-related changes um, are fair game for modification, but the, the amount, for example, is consistent, would have to be consistent with the council's resolution. Okay. And the... The previous one, which you said is pretty similar to this Exhibit A, was also uh, vetted with the deputy prosecuting attorney, so it's all in line. We're not going to run into any detail hang-ups? I, I don't believe there'll be any hang-ups. This, this is a unique distribution for impact fee dollars that have not has not been done in the past, so this is a first, and this is also... Um, something that was fully vetted with the prosecutor. I don't know that the previous distributions for real estate excise tax were vetted with the prosecutor prior to council action, but the prosecutors, the deputy prosecutors looked at the proposals following the adoption and signed off on the form um, once that took place with, with the previous real estate excise tax interlocals. Okay. And the agreement establishes a timeline, which is to, to receive the impact fee allocation by December 31st of 2023, Penment Parks must provide Pierce County a capital project list of eligible capacity projects. That's you, right. And that should, that should be doable considering it's only... A month away? It, sh it should be doable, and um, th this was the timeline that was necessary in order to have the appropriation um, completed this fiscal year. Okay. And, 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 the de and the deadline, just to be clear, for if the districts are watching, um, submittals need to take place to the county, but finance is able to complete the transactions in 2024, provided everything's submitted this year. Okay. And then one last question on the 
the allocation of the park impact fees is for capital purposes only. Cap capital Can you define capital. It's capital improvement projects that that increase capacity to the system, and the way that we've described um, the projects that are that, that would need to be pursued in in this interlocal are projects that are regional in nature, understanding that there's. Um, Folks that come from the peninsulas to the mainland to take to, to participate in, in activities in, our, in, our, in the county parks at Sprinker or maybe down at Chambers Bay, those regional facilities, um, as well as people that are coming from the Tacoma area and go out to the peninsulas to take place to, to, to participate in regional park activities on the peninsula. So there's back and forth that takes place. Impact fees are supposed to be used for regional projects, and so that's how this uh, interlocal agreement was structured was for regional park projects okay. that, that add capacity to the system. So the example that I like to use for folks that try to wrap their head around what does capacity mean, it could be everything from building a new park that maybe is on the beach, no matter what size, because that has a regional draw, or even adding lighting to an existing sports field um, at a location, where now you're adding hours to the amount of time that the park can be used use because you're lighting it up. So that's a capacity project that could be um, funded. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the questions. Are there questions before we open this up for a public hearing? Don't see any. Uh, this is a public hearing on Resolution 2023-162S. There remains no members of the public in the chambers. Mr. Weinsbury, anybody in our Zoom room? Yes, sir. For any members of the public who wish to provide comment on proposal number R2023-162S, press the raise hand icon in Zoom or star nine on your telephone keypad. And it looks like we have one hand. Uh, Larry, please state your name for the record. Larry, we'll can... th there you are. You'll have three minutes to make your remarks and we'll start the timer after you introduce yourself. Good afternoon, Mr. Levine. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Council, for the opportunity to speak today. I'm Larry Levine, the Executive Director of Forever Green Trails. The committee amendments watered down the language that uh, in the resolution that provided assurance of, uh, uh, for a regional benefit with the transferred funds. They also weakened the link to the county's adopted fiscal policy and its project list subsequently vetted by the thorough demand and needs assessment in your adopted pros plan. The fiscal policy also includes a percentage breakdown of how additional capacity will be provided by park impact fees, 32% via improvements at existing parks, 30% via new parks, and 38% via new trails. The recent park impact fee working group supported continuing this funding breakdown and the concept that impact fees should be used, one, for capacity projects in the urban area, two, linked to growth and demand, and three, following the percentage breakdown I just mentioned. While certain funding types are highly flexible, impact fees are less so. I think this resolution and the adopted CFP set a bad precedent for their use and invite challenges. Forever Green Trails is concerned that these changes may result in the impact fees not being used where they were intended and not for the types of projects they were intended. The Peninsula Park Districts are important partners in providing recreation opportunities for the public but a higher level of oversight and alignment with county policies and procedures is warranted. I'm concerned that there will be an expectation and political pressure to approve whatever projects the districts submit to the county. Rather, the resolution and agreement should be maintain a clear linkage to the adopted fiscal policy and its core tenets and project list backed up by the thorough analysis of the county's pros plan. Referencing the fiscal policy and the resolution's recitals is simply not sufficient. The amended resolution language before you represents a slippery slope. I urge you not to support the resolution as written, but rather restore the linkages to the adopted county policies removed by the committee amendment. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. And there are no other hands at this time, Chair. Seeing no other hands, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the council. Council comments, um, final remarks by council members. Council member Denson. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Kruger, for all of, all of your work on this. I want to thank you for the audience, thank you 
well. The Park Department has worked all year and probably prior to that, um, working on these ILAs, working with the park districts um, to come to an agreement and to come to understanding that, that they can both support. So I want to, want to thank them for their work. We are kind of at the 11th hour, as Council Member Morell pointed out. So it is going to be tight for the park districts to submit their list of projects that meet the criteria that we discussed here today capital projects, regional in nature, that incre increase capacity. But they, it is what it is. This is the time period that they have. And I know that both park districts have been working really hard to develop and provide park facilities as well as recreational opportunities to our community out west of the Narrows. We've had a lot of growth out there resulting in park impact fees. Um, and this, these dollars will, will help a lot to to fill the gaps and, and provide services, um, not only to the folks out there in the western part of the county, but as Mr. Kruger mentioned, parks that, that will appeal and, and fill the needs of folks over here as well. Mr. Kruger mentioned um, the waterfront parks that we have over there, many of which don't have a lot of de development, so this certainly will or could help with those parks. Um, we also have some specialized parks like our 360 parks, which are very popular for mountain bikers and horseback riders and trail runners and things like that. So those are just a couple of, couple of examples. And of course, lit multi-turf, <laughs> multi-use turf fields are always in high demand. So we might see projects like that as well. And I know that, that fields are, are a need in all of our districts. Um, I want to thank our park districts for all their continued work, um, both with the county and putting together their lists of projects. And I'm excited to see this list of projects and, and let you all know what, what good work that they've done after having received these dollars. So thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you for your work on this, Councilmember Denson. Are there other final remarks? Councilmember Kruber. Speaking is very well versed on, on different items in dealing with parks and open space, and so that gives me pause. And, and I understand we're at the 11th hour, but I'm, and I hear all of this promotion for all of the parks on the other side of the bridge. The bridge is an obstacle. And so I, I this time I'm not, I'm not going to be able to support this, but I appreciate all the hard work. It, I, it just is what it is. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Coover. Councilmember Morell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, question for Mr. Coover. This interlocal agreement, what is the time frame? I mean, what, how long is it in effect? Through next year, through 2024. Okay, so it can be amended after 2024 then? Well, you wouldn't am amend the interlocal agreement this, in other words, it runs this, out in 2020. Right. This, 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 this resolution that you're looking at today is to fund a budget appropriation that was made a couple of years ago, right? This is not, this has nothing to do with the budget that the council recently adopted in the last couple of weeks. So this is a two-year-old um, funding allocation and, and implementation of a capital facility project that was adopted. So adoption of the resolution, um, submittal of the list of projects, um, parks department, approval of that list, and finances, you know, cutting the check, we'll, we'll close the books on, on this appropriation, and that can take place throughout all of next year. Um, subsequent um, transfers of funding to the park districts will take subsequent action by council. Um, now the council did uh, appropriate, fun appropriate funding in its budget that you just adopted a couple of weeks ago, and there are projects looking forward um, in the CFP in the, in the out years on the peninsulas. And there was also a proviso that requested um, the park department work with the metropolitan park districts, including the, the two that we're talking about today, as well as Anderson Island, as well as uh, Tacoma Metropolitan Park District, to look at divesting the county's interests in properties that we currently own in those areas to kind of separate the areas that we're investing and, 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 and working on projects. Um, 
that's all going to come in the next couple of years. That work will be done and require additional council action before anything happens in regards to those decisions. But this is taking care of, I guess, loose ends from, from previous appropriations that have happened um, again in 2021. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for that, that answer. I think uh, there again, um, this is uh, an agreement that is being carried forward from 2021. Uh, I think this allocation is justified to the different park, uh, metropolitan park districts. Um, and uh, I think, uh, you know, moving forward, it may come back as a different version. Uh, but I think there again at this point, um, I, I don't think it's a slippery slope that that uh, it is going to cause us to have any uh, real challenges because I think the goal is there again maybe to divest some of these properties. And I've always uh, been uh, pleasantly surprised at both the Peninsula Metropolitan Park District and, and key Peninsula Metropolitan Park Districts about their ability to deliver projects. And I think that's what it's all about, is giving the resources to entities that can deliver projects. And uh, I think there again, <clears throat> they understand what the regional uh, approach is, and I think they can carry that out and when I go over to Gig Harbor uh, area, Key Peninsula area, there's places that I can go and recreate. So um, I will be supporting this, and I appreciate Council Member Denson's uh, work on this, and I will stand by my word and support it. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Rowe. Vice Chair Campbell. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. All right. It's working. Um, actually, Councilman Morrell said a lot of what I was going to say. Going back to going back to 2021, um, uh, and a lot of the work that we did to set this in place. Uh, this is just really a continuation, the next step. Uh, so I want to thank everyone for their work on this to keep this at the forefront and get it over the line. Um, you know, many times when we're up here, we like to think it's. We've come up with a new idea and a new way of doing things, and everything's new and shiny, but really much of what our job is to just keep um, the progression going of these long-term ideas, concepts, and projects, and to just keep checking in, making sure we're on the right path, and then keep us moving forward. And this is a perfect example of um, long-term strategic thinking in local governance, so I will proudly be supporting this. Thank you, Vice Chair Campbell. Any other final remarks? I too want to uh, thank Councilmember Denson for her leadership here, um, Mr. Kruger for supporting these many conversations with uh, Parks and Recreation, Finance Department, the uh, the Park Districts on the West Side. As was um, as has been indicated, um, you, you know, but the we're fortunate that we have uh, these metropolitan park districts. Um, Penn Med and Key Penn on the west side of Pierce County who do excellent work at providing parks and recreation services. Um, and if they are able to grow their capacity and provide more opportunities for, um, for, for folks, then um, everyone benefits. And with the you know, soccer fields being lit longer into the evening, uh, kids from uh, the mainland will find soccer fields on the west side to play soccer. Um, and other recreational opportunities. So um, they, they are the, the main provider there, and if we can provide some financial resources for them to provide parks and recreation um, services uh, that they're willing to deliver, then great. And uh, there's been a lot of development on the west side, uh, generating a lot of revenue from impact fees, and um, folks on uh, all parts of Pierce County should be able to benefit from that revenue generation. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll on Proposal R-2023-162-S? Councilmember Herrera. Aye. 
Council Member Hitchin? Aye. Council Member Morrell? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Kruber? Nay. Council Member Denson? Aye. And Council Member Mello? Aye. The result of the roll call vote is six ayes and one nay. On a vote of six ayes and one nay, the resolution is adopted. Next up, we have resolution 2023-163S before us. Councilmember Denson for a motion. Thank you, Chair. I move proposal R2023-163S. Okay. It's been properly moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2023-163S. Madam Clerk, will you please read the title into the record? Proposal number R2023-163S. A resolution of the Pierce County Council authorizing the Pierce County Executive to execute a local agreement with Key Peninsula Metropolitan Park District for distribution, distribution of park impact fees and requesting that the Finance Department record said agreement on the county's dedicated interlocal agreement website. Thank you. Mr. Kruger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I would just say that this proposal is very, very similar to the previous proposal, except for it would provide funding for the Key Peninsula Metropolitan Park District, which is the the next park district west um, from where we, we were just talking about. The funding amount would be $328,000. Again, this proposal was considered by the Community Development Committee at its November 20th hearing and received a due pass as substituted recommendation. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Are there questions for Mr. Kruger before we open this up for a public hearing? Not seeing any. There remains no members of the public in council chambers. Mr. Winesbury, anybody in the Zoom room? Yes, sir. For any members of the public who wish to provide comment on proposal number R2023-163S, press the raise hand icon in Zoom or star nine on your telephone keypad. And at this time we have one hand. Uh, Larry, please state your name for the record. Hi there, this is Larry Levine with Forever Green Trails. Mr. Chair and Council Members, I'm just uh, reiterating my concerns that I stated previously uh, about the, uh, the previous re resolution. Thank you very much. Thank you again for making time to be with us. And there are no hand hands at this time, Chair. Seeing no further hands, we'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the Council. Are there final remarks by Council Members? Again, um, similar concept, just with a neighboring uh, park district that serves the Key Peninsula. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and ask the clerk to please call the roll on Resolution 2023-163S. Thank you. Council Member Hitchin. Aye. Council Member Morrell. Aye. Council Member Campbell. Aye. Council Member Kruver. Nay. Council Member Denson. Aye. Council Member Herrera. Aye. And Council Member Mello. Aye. The result of the roll call vote is six ayes and one nay. On a vote of six ayes and one nay, the resolution is adopted. That brings us to Section 10, Community Forum. Community Forum is an opportunity for members of the public to address the Council on any topic that is of significance to or affecting Pierce County government and that did not appear on today's agenda. There is a three-minute time limit. We ask you to state your name if you would like it on the record and to address all comments to the Chair. I will start with those in chambers, which again, there are no members of the public in chambers. So we'll now turn to our Zoom room. Mr. Winesbury. Yes, sir. For any members of the public who wish to provide comment, press the raise hand icon in Zoom or star nine on your telephone keypad. And right now we have two hands at this time. Uh, last name ending in Harrington. Play, uh, please state your name for the record. Hi, uh, my name is Alex Harrington. Um, I was speaking to you uh, in my capacity as Executive Director of Building Opportunities for Learning the Trades. Uh, thank you, Chair Mello and members of the Council. Um, BOLT, Building Opportunities for Learning the Trades, is a nonprofit uh, started by the Master Builders Association of Pierce County. Um, and we just wanted to lend our support um, for the proposed resolution uh, that includes your uh, legislative priorities list. 
Um, we wanted to thank you for placing such a high priority on supporting workforce development in the construction trades in your upcoming legislative priority list. Um, as you well know, the cost of housing in our community is prohibitive for a lot of our neighbors, and so addressing the shortage of labor in the skilled trades is paramount to making affordable, attainable housing reality for folks in Pierce County. Um, our schools have incredible instructors who are dedicated to training up the next generation of framers and electricians and plumbers and fabricators, installers, technicians. Um, they're going to need your continued support, so we really appreciate you placing such a high premium um, on training up the next generation of tradespeople. Uh, so we want to uh, lend our support to that, and thank you very much. Thank you for being with us. Next, we have Larry. Please state your name for the record. Hello, this is, again, Larry Levine. Um, uh, I am sort of also speaking as uh, director of Evergreen Trails. Um, in my uh, testimony, I had referenced the Park Impact Fee Working Group, and I uh, represented um, uh, trail interests in that. Um, and I was uh, really appreciated being invited and participating in that discussion. I thought um, both the, the uh, Parks Department staff and the, uh, the consultants that were um, hired to run the process did a great job and uh, was certainly a really great learning experience. I hope that you will take a, a good look at the uh, report that is forthcoming shortly to you all and uh, look forward to uh, hearing your discussions about that. Um, it was very interesting, very enlightening, and uh, I think that, that uh, it was sort of a, an affirmation of previous work that had been done and the approach that the county has used. But I'll leave it to the report to give you more details. But I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing, Mr. Levine. And at this time, we have no other hands, Chair. Seeing no hands, we'll close the, pub the community forum portion of our meeting and bring it back to the council. We are at section 11, other business and announcements. Are there any other business or announcements by council members? Council member Herrera. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so this weekend, December 2nd, in Puyallup, in downtown Puyallup, uh, they're going to kick off the holidays starting at 12 p.m. They're going to have a holiday market. It opens at noon on, at Pioneer Park, and then that will run until 7 p.m. Um, is this mic on? It's on. Try again now. You tracking? Yes, sir. All right. Continue to march. Um, and at 5 p.m., the Santa Parade is going to kick off in downtown Puyallup, rain or shine. Um, <laughs> several hundred people come out every year. It really gets everyone's spirits up, and it's great. So I'll be down there marching with uh, some veterans with the American flag. So we'll see you down there. Customer Herrera, do you also want to share about your in-district meeting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that one too. A lot of things going on. So going on in tomorrow two. we're having our in-district meeting. It's going to be in the great city of Sumner um, at the city hall. Uh, we're going to be having a proclamation of making Pierce County a Purple Heart um, County, which is real important. We have a lot of veterans who live here and folks who were wounded in combat and folks who've lost loved ones earned the Purple Heart. And it's real important to uh, remember the sacrifices of this. There are going to be a lot of veterans out there. We're going to have a Cub Scout troop out there to bring the flags in. We're also going to have the city of Summer tell them what, some of the exciting things they're doing in their city, um, within the city and in the surrounding areas. Um, so it should be good. So see you all down there. We look forward to it tomorrow evening in Sumner at Sumner City Hall. All members of the public are invited to attend. Any other business by members? I'll just share that uh, Santa is going to be very busy on Saturday. Before Santa gets to Puyallup, Santa will be uh, in South Tacoma. Um, uh, South Tacoma Santa Parade will be this Sunday, December 3rd, uh, along South Tacoma Way in the central part of the South Tacoma Way Business District. So in and around 56th, 54th, 52nd, and South Tacoma Way, uh, will be the uh, now annual South Tacoma Santa Parade, and all members of the public are encouraged to attend that one as well um, uh, before heading to uh, Puyallup to catch Santa there. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Denson. 
Thank you, Chair. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Santa is also coming to Gig Harbor <laughs> on Saturday night to light the Gig Harbor tree. And then after the parade in South Tacoma on Sunday, Santa will be on the Key Peninsula to light that tree out there. So people are, Busy. there's lots of things. Yes, Santa is amazing. <laughs> yes, it's magic. Oh, I'll also just mention that uh, you'll see the council uh, come back into session um, in a little over an hour at 5 p.m. this evening. The Pierce County Council will have an evening meeting um, to uh, hear a report by the Performance Audit Committee related to the sustainability of the county road fund. So by charter, we have to have those in the evening. So you might be wondering why we're taking a break. It's so that we can really accommodate the interest of the public and availability of the public in an evening meeting. So you'll, you'll see this evening, Tuesday, November 28th at 5 p.m., um, the council come back into session to uh, have a report and discussion about the sustainability of the county road fund. Ms. Murray or Ms. Long, is there any other business for council this evening? Not today, thank you. Seeing no other business before the Pierce County Council, we are adjourned. <laughs>